Happy Friday! Welcome to Facebook Friday. Hopefully I am in the right spot. I always have to check to make sure. Yep, looks like I'm here. Um, if you're watching in the replay, thank you. Um, I appreciate those views as much as the live views. I know I can't always catch the lives when I want to catch them either. So thanks for watching. All right, I see some of you jumping on. Let's see if I can get my iPad up. Hello, okay, I can see you guys. I'm gonna get started pretty quickly today. Uh, my projects have a lot of coloring on them, so they take a little bit longer than normal projects. Hi guys. Um, I thought I would take just a couple minutes here at the beginning to show you a few cards. I got some really pretty cards in the mail the last week or two, and I wanted to just share them. This one is from Cindy Kang, and look how pretty it is, but watch. It opens up. Isn't that fancy? So Cindy, thank you so much for that cute card. And then I got another one with this B, Kathy Crow. That's who it's from. Look how cute. Have you guys noticed this stamp in the annual catalog? It's a single stamp. And it's really cute and I love the colors that she chose. So thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Um, let's see, what else do I have to show you? This is from one of my downline, Kelly. I love that fish. Where is it? In this paper. It was out maybe last year's catalog, maybe the year before, I don't know, but I love it. So thank you, Kelly. And then I have a few swaps. We had our team swap. I showed you my card earlier in the week for our um, team blog hop, but I wanted to show you a few of the other ones. We had three full groups, so and I was only in one. So I don't have everybody's swap card, but oh, there's Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. Um, here's one with this dashing deer, and I have to say I used this for the first time yesterday, designing, or day before, designing cards for next month, and this dashing deer stamp is awesome. This is just the framelit. Isn't that adorable? Of course, with a buffalo check. And then here's a cute Halloween card. I guess I should have taken them out of the cellophane, huh? Loving, still loving that Halloween stuff. My favorite right now, Country Home. I really like the the little punches here in the corner that she did. Isn't that awesome? Beautiful coloring too. And here's a Christmas one. And you know what's funny? I told I said when I was showing my team, I don't I haven't even noticed this framelit in the catalog. Um, but I have since seen it and I can't wait to order it. Beautiful. You know, so many new beautiful things in the catalog. You can't see them all the first, I don't know, 10 times you look through the catalog. And this one, guys, I've been designing the class. It's going to be this bundle for next month. Um, and it is gorgeous. Look at that. Um, that looks like uh, old olive maybe and pear pizzazz together. I love the two-tone when you do that die cut in the dark color and then the solid one in the back in a lighter color. It's so beautiful. And then here's one from Gina. I know who this is from, Gina, with those cute little, those little shapes we used last week. Um, you guys, it's storming in the area. So if any of the internet goes in and out, um, I'm sorry. But just know that when I upload it at the end to Facebook, it'll be completely clean and there won't be any breaks in the service. And I know you guys have seen this cute little country home bundle in the catalog. Love it. This one is gorgeous. I love the simplicity of this, that embossed background, and that just that stitched oval. And those are the pun those are the little sprig punches. So cute. All right, and then ooh, we've got some spooky bats. Very spooky. Guess what, you guys? I have next week's projects designed already, and they involve bats and blood splatter. That's not something you'd expect to hear me say on Facebook at any time, but yes, it involves a blood splatter in the form of real red ink. But if you like Halloween treats, definitely gonna wanna watch next week's Facebook Live. Look at this one, speaking of the bats. So cute. So that's one group of my team swaps. My team has the best swaps, and I'm not just saying that, our team is amazing, and I can see lots of them on here, and I know that they would agree. We have amazing swaps. Okay, let's get started because I've got to get all this done within an hour and there's a lot of coloring. Let's do prizes from last week. Um, two, the two people I randomly chose 
um, to win the sharing prize, the video, the prize for sharing the video are Judy Thompson and Kathy Runes. So Judy and Kathy, please message me or email me, erica at pinkbuckaroo.com, your mailing address. That's the only way I know how to get them to you. You've got to message me, okay? So congratulations, ladies. Then we had two prize winners from the raffle copter over on my blog. These are the hostess sets. And Chris K, my video is backwards. Chris K and Patty Jo Higgins. I've emailed you. The raffle copter gives me your email addresses. So ladies, send me your email. I mean, send me your shipping, your mailing address, and I'll get those out on Monday. Ooh, you guys, it's storming outside. I hope the internet stays intact. Okay, so this week, prizes. I always do two sets of prizes. One set for everyone who shares the video. And those, I'll show you those. I'm got, I've got two stamp sets for sharing next week. This, nope, this one, which is uh, one of the most popular sets from last year's holiday catalog, now in the annual catalog, and swirly frames. So I will pick two people at random on Wednesday next week. You guys, Facebook Live is going to be on Wednesday next week. I'm going to Michigan on Thursday to go to Rhonda Wade's convention. So... I won't be here Thursday and Friday, so Facebook Friday will be on Wednesday. So you've got to enter this by Tuesday, uh, or share this by Tuesday. That's how you get entered to win these, is you share the video. Then the raffle copter that's over on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, you scroll down to the bottom, you enter your information, and that I will choose one winner to get the pick a pin it bundle. All right, awesome. Really good prizes this week, if I do say so myself. I think they're pretty good. Now, if you have not done Facebook Live with us, Facebook Friday with us before, I forgot to grab this, I offer the make and takes that I do for free with a minimum order of $30 online before Monday at midnight. This is what they look like. I package them up, has everything you need to make them, and I mail them to you. Um, you've gotta use that hostess code that's assigned to Facebook Friday. Um, you can, you'll see that when I turn the camera down and you'll also find it on my blog. Um, it's also on this PDF. This PDF I type, you guys, I switched the camera this week so that it wouldn't be backwards, but I feel like it is backwards. I don't know. Do, do the words look backwards to you guys? <laughs> I can't tell. Anyways, go over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com and you can get this full PDF of everything we're going to do today. It has all the supplies. Prices, item numbers, measurements down here, and that hostess code that I was telling you about is right there at the top. So they're not backwards. So Cindy, I've been doing it backwards this whole time, and this week I turned it so that it wouldn't be backwards, but now it feels backwards. I don't know. Um, I want to remind you too about the all-star tutorial bundle for September, and we're not supposed to show you guys our projects. They're supposed to be a secret. But guess what my project this month uses? The Mini Blessings stamp set. I think I like it a little bit. And what else? The Buffalo Check. So this is a free tutorial bundle, 54 pages of tutorials by all these amazing ladies that I send anybody who places a minimum $50 order. If you're a demonstrator and you want this, but you don't want to put an order in with me because you can do it yourself, you can um, buy this for $15. That's on my blog. The information's there linked, but also on the second page of my PDF, you can find that link right there. And don't forget the cauldron bubble class is coming up. That deadline, I think we still have like a week and a half for that. All right, so if you want that, make sure you get in on it. That class is already huge, it's huge. Okay, you guys, I think we're ready. So today, three projects with the many blessings. I wanna know who has the stamp set. I feel like it's a sleeper. I feel like people haven't ordered it yet, and it's so cute. It is a million dollar achiever stamp set, and I should have pulled out my catalog. When you sell a million dollars, you get to des help design a stamp set, which to me sounds like the ultimate exciting thing to do. Um, and so this one is, and I have to look it up, this is Ruth Snyder's. You can always tell down here, God, I am so confused with this camera. Right here, this thing right here 
says it was a million dollar achiever and Ruth Snyder designed it. So isn't that exciting? Speaking of a million dollars, you guys have helped me and I reached my 500,000 goal yesterday. I just thought of that to tell you guys. Lots of you have been asking me about it and I got it yesterday. My goal was by the end of September and you guys helped me, so thank you. So I'm halfway to designing my own stamp set, hopefully, eventually. All right, well, let's get started stamping. My post should be live over on Pink Buckaroo Designs if, in case you wanna go over there and print out that PDF and follow along. Okay, I'm gonna switch the camera. This is when it gets weird. All right, so close your eyes. You can see that it's, so, it's raining outside. We here in South Texas have been in a severe drought and we have had so much rain since Labor Day that we're no longer in a drought. And usually they say it takes like a really long time to get out of a severe drought. Oh, my thing's all crooked. Let's see. Well, look, does that look backwards to you guys? Because it looks backwards to me. That looks very backwards. I think I can change it. Tell me if it looks backwards. And I'll fix it because to me it's backwards thanks Mary I'm excited about it it was a goal I set for myself and there was no real reason other than I wanted to have it done before I went to on stage it's backwards weird okay so I'm gonna see if I'm gonna if I can fix it you guys be patient with me let's see oh, I think I fixed it no maybe it's a delay. Ta-da! Yes, that did it. All right, now, good grief, Erica. Get it together. All right, so now, this part bugs me because I want it to be perfect. I'm going to do something different today, too, when I start coloring. I am going to lift this up a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I think we're ready. Here are our three projects. We've got super cute projects, fall. Not really fall. Some flowers could be fall, but fall and spring and Christmas, okay? So we're gonna start with this box here. And I asked you guys who has the mini blessings stamp set and then I didn't look. So if you have it already, do you love it? It's so cute. And you know what? One of the reasons I love it is because the images are small. So the coloring that's involved is not too intense. You know, sometimes the images are so huge that it takes you forever to color them. And they are, um, you know, it gets, you know, like too much to color. But these are, these are small. Now you'll also notice we have some gold flecks on here, a little Vegas gold. Let me show you how this opens and you can see what's inside. A little hand cream box. See how I put a little hole in the top of that? Pretty cute. All right, so let's get started. I think we should make the holder first. I need to start focusing and stop chit-chatting so we can get this done. Um... I have everything on my table today and it's kind of overwhelming. All right, now remember, the measurements are here on my paper and I actually need to look at them too because we've got quite a bit of score lines. Ah, my scoreboard is buried. I've been prepping my country home class today, so we've got stuff everywhere. All right, so you're gonna start with a two by 10 and a half inch piece of crumb cake cardstock. And we're gonna score it at four and three fourths and five and three fourths. All right, so we've got that one. Then we've got this small piece of crumb cake that is two by three and five eighths, and it's scored at half an inch and one and a half inches. While I have the score simply scored here, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one. We've got a piece of pumpkin pie. And can you guys see this? This is all right here, so don't feel like you have to write it down. It'll be there for you when you want it, right there on my blog. All right, so this is pumpkin pie, three and a half by six, and we're gonna score this one at one inch on all four sides. Now, just to let you guys know, I have already pre-recorded the clean versions, the quick versions, if you want to um, re-watch it later, so you don't have to go through all the chit-chat and chatter of Facebook Live. And those will be on YouTube this weekend. 
Okay, so here is my crumb cake piece. We're gonna fold it just to make a U like that. Now we need it to fold over, but the cardstock wasn't long enough to make that happen. So that's why we have to have two pieces. And this is gonna be our top, and I'm using this triple punch, and I'm gonna punch both sides right there. And when you're doing a 3D project, you definitely want to use tear and tape or fast fuse if you have any left. Remember fast fuse was retired with all the sad demonstrators and customers crying who loved fast fuse, me included. And I still have a drawer full of it, but I'm trying to make myself use the fast fuse, I mean the tear and tape. Okay, so see how I put that there on the top and that's gonna fold over like that. All right, so see how that goes like that. But let's do some stamping on the front before we put it together. Now I'm using two other stamps here with this project. The first one is, actually no, I'm not using this one. That goes with the other project. I'm using one other stamp, Gallery Grunge. And this stamp, and I couldn't really think of how to describe this image. It's like a chevron, like a distressed wood. I don't know but it's cool, I like it. It's just gonna give a little bit of texture um, to our project. All of these texture stamps are fun, and in fact, on Wednesday, for my Halloween projects, I'm using some more texture stamps too. Okay, so we did that on that part. Now we wanna do the lid part also. And this stamp is big, and it's, it would be hard to ink it with the ink down so I lay my stamp down and I ink on the top like that. And then I'm gonna do the lid or the top. It's not really a lid, it's like the top panel. All right, so now we've got that all put together like that, okay? Now, you guys, I know I'm gonna forget the gold splatter. Don't let me finish this project without the gold splatter, but it's the last thing we do, okay? I know I'm gonna forget it. All right, now the inside box part, we're gonna actually not, we're not gonna cut it yet. Let's get that circle. Now this, and I have an extra one here. Well, I need to take it out because I made this one yesterday and I only have two. So what I did to get this to fit in the circle is I actually unscrewed it and it kind of holds it in place. So if you put, the problem is is that this is bigger than a three-fourths of an inch, but the one inch was really too big for here. So I found that if I unscrewed it and just kind of threaded it through that hole, then it held it in place nicely. Um, I don't know, I kind of like that. All right, so I've done that three-quarters of an inch there. I'm gonna cut these on the side, these score lines just along the side. Hi, Crystal. I know I love that stamp set too. Oh, Marion, thank you. Sometimes, sometimes I have a hard time coming up with things. All right, I'm caving and I'm using my fast fuse, you guys, because to do four, if you watch my clean video, you'll see me struggling to do four squares of tear and tape on a video. Tear and tape is easy unless you're making a video. And then it's like, the tear and tape nose and it doesn't want to peel off and so anyways I'm using fast fuse okay so I just put those square tabs inside the box and now we're gonna adhere it inside and remember let me give you kind of a perspective here's what it looks like now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna put some adhesive if you don't have fast fuse do not use snail here it will not hold that box use something really really strong like tear and tape all right, so I've put adhesive here in this middle and then there on the bottom, and the hole is at the top, and I'm gonna lay it down right there on that score line, centering it, and I'm gonna fold that bottom up like that. So that is taped in like that, so this part opens up. All right, and it closes around the box beautifully. All right, so now, if you didn't see, I just opened the little hand cream. Oops, I gotta put that in first. It's a pretty tight fit. I did that on purpose. I did it. I did make it bigger the first time and it was kind of wobbly and shaking around. I didn't like that. So we made it a tight fit like that and then we close it up. 
All right, now we're gonna make that tag. The tag holds this in place. See how it slides down under it? So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna make the tag. And I'm gonna use a bunch of Stampin' Blends. Now, last night at my card class, we used, we used this exact stamp to make the card that I showed you yesterday. And I had a lot of questions about Stampin' Blends. Um, you guys need to know if you haven't tried Stampin' Blends that they are not intimidating. They are the easiest coloring medium that you can use. They're very, very forgiving. All right, so I'm gonna put this here. Let's see, I hope it focuses. Kind of raising the surface a little bit. I have found that if I zoom in on Facebook Live, then it totally messes up the recording. So I'm gonna try that. Hopefully you guys can see a little bit better. All right, here are my blends. And I've actually done these pumpkins in a bunch of different ways. You know, pumpkins can come in all kinds of colors. But I'm gonna start here with a traditional pumpkin pie color, of course, and I always go with a light. I start with a light. And last night, we talked about it, and Paula, I don't know if Paula's watching, but Paula says she does the opposite. She starts with a dark color. There really is no wrong way. So I've gone over the lines, and now I'm going to put a line there where the crate is overlapping it. That creates a darker shadow from the crate. So what Paula says she does is she does those she does those dark lines first. Um, and I have done it both, both ways. I just kind of prefer to do that way. It's just a matter of preference. All right, now I'm gonna get Cajun Craze. This is a darker, kind of a burnt orange. And I'm gonna do the light. And the light is pretty dark. Now, um, I think I mentioned it, maybe I didn't. I stamped a memento black. Mary Ann, I'm so glad you asked that. I didn't even say the hand cream is Bath and Body Works. And they're $4 each, that's why I only bought two. <laughs> Usually I try to get three, because I always end up making three projects. But they're Bath and Body Works, and I bought another one that says something about a witch and it's purple and green, and it's so cute for our witch, you know, our witch set, but I haven't done anything with it yet. But go, they have a budge. I even pulled it up and linked it on my blog post. All right, so Cajun Craze Pumpkin Pie. I'm gonna do the little gourd in Dark Daffodil. I've <clears throat> really struggled with what to do this gourd in because aren't they normally kind of yellow and green? But when I went over it with my green, I didn't really like it that much. So I'm gonna leave it yellow. And then Dark, Real red for the apple. When the, when the thing is small, when the object is small, I don't really try to do a whole lot of shading because it's just too tiny, too tiny. All right, now I'm gonna use green, old olive, light old olive for the leaves because here in South Texas, in the fall, the leaves haven't changed yet. They change right before Christmas. So I'm gonna make this a South Texas fall. I hope when I go to Michigan next week that I can see some fall colors. Rhonda told me that maybe, but I looked up the weather and it looks to be pretty cool over there, so I cannot wait. We've had two straight weeks of, of rain, which has kept our temperatures down, but typically this time of the year, we're still in the upper 90s, even in the evenings. There's no, there's no um, relief usually around my birthday, which is on the 28th of September. That's usually when we get the first little, little tiny break of heat. All right, so I went over the crate with light crumb cake. Now I'm gonna take my dark crumb cake and go over the, the lines of the crate as well as those little hash marks. And then I'm going to just carefully go around the edge of those, those little, things that are in front of it, the leaf and the pumpkin. Now I'm gonna take my light and blend it all together. Now if you guys wanna see this close up, the recording that's gonna be on YouTube, I zoomed it way in so you could really get a good look. Um, and just know that I am no expert at coloring, seriously, no expert. Until the blends came out, I really did not like to color. And now that they have come out, I love to color because they make everybody look like a professional. All right, now this is light 
um, Smoky Slate. This was my tip this week, and I had a lot of questions about this white pumpkin. Look, I haven't done anything to it except take this light Smoky Slate and just kind of trace around it. Now I'm using the brush tip and I don't know why because I don't like to use the brush tip very much. I like to keep that, that shadow kind of skinny and I kind of made it fat, but I think it's okay because your eye doesn't really see that shadow. But anyway, it makes everything pop off and give um, some dimension. Okay, so that's it. Not too difficult, I don't think. We're gonna bring that back over here in just a minute. Let's put this tag together, and I'm not looking at your questions. I can't find the project printout sheets. Okay, Tracy, go to my blog. Has the blog post gone up? It was scheduled to go up, hopefully it did. If it did, it's right under the fourth picture. I always link it under the fourth picture. You guys, I copy and paste that post every week, so it's exactly the same format. I just change out the information, and that link to the project sheet is right under that fourth picture, okay? Hopefully you can find it. If the, if the blog post hasn't gone up because I scheduled it wrong, which could happen, has happened, um, then I will do it as soon as I'm done. I'm looking at Diane's comic. Could you color the gourd with daffodil and highlight it with a light green? So Diane, I did that and I didn't like it. The green kind of bled out into the, the daffodil delight. Maybe if I had let the daffodil delight dry a little bit, but that's what I did the first time and it, the green just kind of took over. It was okay, but I don't know. Okay, so I'm gonna put dimensionals here at the bottom of my tag. Oh, I didn't even tell you, I layered this on a second to largest stitched circle, pumpkin pie, and then the starburst punch, pumpkin pie, all dimensionals, okay? Now I'm gonna put this here like this and see where the dimensionals are. And I'm gonna put the dimensionals below where that lid is and like that. All right, so then it'll slide in and out like that, okay? All right, so now let's do the sentiment. We're almost done with this one and I'm not gonna forget the gold. Where's my little tiny scrap? I got a tiny little scrap of crumb cake. And this sentiment says, thankful for every day, for you every day, and um, it's too big. So I'm just gonna use thankful. So I'm just gonna stamp the top part of that right there. And then I'm gonna, gonna take my scissors and, hi Mike, hi Emery, and I'm gonna cut out the thankful part. All right, just like that. And then a tiny baby dimensional for the back. I don't think they're called tiny babies, but that's what I call them. I think they're actually called mini dimensionals. All right, and then I'm just gonna lay it right there. All right, time for some Vegas gold. Could they have come up with a better name for this shimmer paint? I don't think so. Shimmer Gold. We have four new colors of shimmer paint and there's a ton of ways to use it. Um, I'm just gonna show you one today and that's Splatter. Um, a little bit of this goes a long way. It has these little, little balls in there that shake it up. So shake it real good and then you can use the lid, but I'm gonna add a little bit of water to it. So I'm just gonna put like one drop that's my official measurement, one drop. <laughs> um, hopefully your drop won't be much bigger than mine. It doesn't really matter. Now I've squeezed the water out of my aqua painter so it's got lots of water in there and it's kind of juicy. And now I'm just gonna take my finger and tap, tap, tap. And you could get crazy with it, which I did on the second one. Another way to do that is to take it in your lid and splatter. Okay, I think it needs a little more right there. And that is the Shimmer Vegas Gold. Um, it's really fun to play with. And when we used to carry Shimmer paint a long time ago, and I used to, used to love it and used it a bunch, and I keep forgetting to use it because I am not used to us having it. This is the braided linen trim. I'm just gonna make a little bow and a glue dot. 
Tracy, I'm sorry. Thank you, Anne-Marie and Cindy. Thank you. Yeah, pinkbuckaroo.com. I will add the link in the video when I'm done, when I go back to edit. And there we have it, you guys. What do you think? You know, I'm really trying to come up with treat, um, treats that are not candy because I can't help myself from eating it. So I've got to have some things in here that aren't candy. So the hand cream is a good one. All right, you guys. So let's see. Did I miss any questions? You have not seen it, Tracy. You've not seen the, the, um, Shimmer paint, it's beautiful. It's in the new holiday catalog. All right, thanks, Aunt Alessandra. I'm glad you like it. All right, I'm gonna move it. I don't wanna pick it up too much because it's wet. All right, next project. The next one, we're gonna use the little sunflower and it's probably gonna get gold on it. You know what, let me wipe this real quick so that we don't get gold on everything. Normally, I would switch this out. Well, look, that's already dry. Okay, so the sunflowers. Here in South Texas, the sunflowers are a sign of dove hunting season, and that's usually um, end of August, beginning of September. So sunflowers always do make me think of fall, but they also make me think of summer, too, because they're, they're out in the summer. So this card could be, man, I've got stuff everywhere. This card could be fall, spring, summer, um, you know doesn't have to be fall. All right, so we're gonna start, and this is a gatefold card, and we're gonna use that buffalo check. All I've done is taken a half sheet of cardstock, cut it at five and a half, and then scored it at two and an eighth from each side, just to make that card front fold a little bit different. Nothing fancy um, with that at all. All right, let's do the gingham first, the buffalo check. What's the difference in buffalo check and gingham? Is there any difference? Is Buffalo Check the just the black and white? I don't know. Does anybody know? You guys were so helpful the last time I, with the Lotus Pod, you schooled me on dried florals. Maybe you know the difference between Buffalo Check and Gingham. How long does it take for the shimmer paint to dry? So Mary, I just tried to wipe that and most of it was already dry. So not very long at all. Okay, so where's the big one you showed at? Um, I can't see that comment. Tracy, I'm gonna message you when we're done, okay? Because for some reason, it's only showing me part of your of your comment. At the end, I'll message you, okay? Okay, so Kathy says Buffalo, Kathy and Joy say Buffalo check is larger. Okay, so a large gingham. I don't know, I think it's still the same thing. But you're probably right, I'll go with it. All right, so we're doing this bright and cheery. This is Pineapple Punch, one of our new in colors. Um, Pineapple Punch is a fun, sunny color. And I'm using the Stamparatus. I showed you guys this last week. I still have my washi tape on there. Last night at card class, we did this exact thing. We put our Whisper White here in the washi and we stamped exactly the stamp. Now, if you like to use your magnets, just leave your paper bigger. Um, I'm trying, because I'm working on a large scale, I, there's something on my stamp right there, a little fuzz or something, huh? That was not there last night. Now it's not coming off and it left a little spot. There we go. It's like a eraser, you know, like an eraser um, thing. So I don't know if you guys can see that little dot. I'm gonna stamp it again. Um, so when I'm stamping large quantities, I'm trying to conserve paper. And um, that's why I use the washi tape so that I can use the exact size that I want. Ooh, now that's beautiful. Perfect. This is four inches by five and a fourth. We're gonna cut it in half in just a minute. We're gonna set it aside to dry, and we're gonna color our sunflowers, which, you know, my table's too crowded. I need to not put all of this on the table. All right, let's bring back over a little coloring tray. One word of caution when you are using the yellow blends, and I think I've told you guys this before. The memento typically does not smear at all for me, except with the yellows. 
um, and any, well, really it's just the yellow. So all I do, if I know I'm gonna do yellow, is I stamp it, and then I just hit, hit it with a heat tool, or let it sit there and really dry for five minutes or so. So just a word of caution with your yellows. I'm gonna use Poppy Parade, Pineapple Punch, Old Olive, and Daffodil Delight, and my like Smoky Slate. All right, let's do some Pineapple Punch. It's so tiny, you guys. I need to be up here coloring like this so you can see it, but <laughs> I can't. Just know that on the replay, I zoomed in really, really, really well so that you can see what I'm doing better than what you can see here. But basically, I'll just tell you what I'm doing. Pineapple Punch Light, going back with my dark pineapple punch, and just kind of going around the middle, giving it some dimension. That way it looks like there's kind of a shadow. Okay, then taking Daffodil Delight, and I'm gonna do the same thing Sunflowers come in lots of colors. I'm sure you guys know this. I actually have an arrangement of fake sunflowers in my house um, that have orange sunflowers, yellow sunflowers, light, dark, all different colors. Sunflowers have been one of my favorite flowers for a very long time. In my wedding, we had sunflowers. So, almost 20 years, and I have loved sunflowers. Oh, I didn't get the crumb cake for the center. All right, so now crumb cake, nope, crumb cake light for those centers. Probably bunny for Anne-Marie, that is funny. So Anne-Marie is referring to the whatever was on my gingham stamp because I have a bunny that's, well, one at this moment living in my office. He does not shed as much as the little bunny, I mean the big bunny. But as soon as this rain ends, he is being kicked out to the back. He's finally old enough. I colored it in with light and then went, did the little dots, the little seeds with the dark. Um, he's gonna be living in the backyard with his girlfriend, Stella. Hopefully they don't love each other so much that they kill each other. <laughs> Don't get me started on rabbits, you guys. Okay, I'm seeing a question. How do you keep the paper from slipping inside the washi? It doesn't slip, Lisa. It doesn't slip. I have not had that problem at all. Um, now, sometimes when I stamped it, last night when we stamped it, we it was stuck to the paper, and so we'd peel it off and we'd just put it back down in that washi tape. Um, and then it stayed there. So. That hasn't been a problem for me. If you do have that problem, light poppy parade on this one. If you do have that problem, you know, you can keep your paper larger so that you can use the magnets or you can get, Stampin' Up! does not carry removable adhesive. Is that what it's called? Temporary adhesive? And you could use that and to keep it in place. Or a glue dot. I've done that before with other things. Just use one glue dot to hold something in place. All right, now I'm leaving the center white to make the shine mark in a minute. And I'm not doing a very good job because I'm talking. I'm, I'm going around with a dark poppy parade. Now I'm gonna go back in and blend it all together and go over that light. I left that light so it would only have one layer of ink and it would be really kind of light there in the middle. And the last thing, we're gonna take our smoky slate and just kind of underline everything. Now, Poppy Parade is one of our returning colors. It was an in color years and years and years ago. Something about that doesn't look right to me. I don't know. It's the centers are something. Hold on, let me just do a little more work here. I know it probably doesn't matter, but it's bothering me. They look kind of washed out. Um, Poppy Parade is a, I would say an orange, more orangey red, and I like it. It's neat. The, the, um, 
bundle or the suite of products in the catalog with the Santa. I'm sorry, guys, I don't know the names yet. You know, the little cute Santa with the cute little elves, and then it has that beautiful paper that is flocked. That's all Poppy Parade, and it looks very similar to Real Red, but it's not. It's Poppy Parade. I discovered that recently when I was trying to make a card with it. All right, this is a scalloped pineapple punch um, square. And I'm gonna put a dimensional on there. I did not need to get that many dimensionals off. I don't know why I pulled so many of them off. And we're gonna take our gingham piece and we're gonna cut it in half. Remember it was four by five and a fourth. So we're just gonna cut it at two. Oh, I need a, I need two tables in here is what I need. All right, so let's close the, the gates and we're gonna put these on. And I'm putting them so that they are touching the inside edge of the, they're not centered in, on those panels. They are so that when you close them, they'll be, it's like they're touching. All right, there we go. All right, now we're gonna make a, oh, Heather, your flowers are sunflowers too, awesome. Um, okay, so we're gonna take a piece of soft suede. This is 11 by two and a fourth, and we're gonna make a belly band. And a belly band slides off. So I'm just gonna kind of center it. And if you wanted to do score lines, you could, but really you just need to fold it and get it to line up on the back. I don't even care so much about that in the back. I want it to look nice in the front. There we go. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna open it back up and get soft suede ink and these little seeds. The, there's a stamp in this set that has three little dots and there are the seeds, sunflower seeds, which is so cute, clever. All right, they're little, so you gotta do several, maybe like a dozen. All right, now I'm gonna go back over here and put some adhesive on this and fold it around and adhere it to itself like that. So you can see how it slides on and off, all right? Don't adhere it to your card because then it won't open. All right, this is gonna go right here in the middle and I will get those two dimensionals that I grabbed a minute ago and put that there. Then, where's my sample? What did I do? Oh no, don't do that yet. I was thinking I had a clip, but no, it's a ribbon. And here's the Poppy Parade woven ribbon. Another thing that I've been using a lot lately is this ribbon. All right, tie a bow. And you wanna kinda of keep your bow small so that it doesn't bulk up your card. And if you don't like tying bows, then just tie a knot. That's cute too. And it uses less ribbon. I always have to mess around with it. Get those little loops and the little legs just right. All right, now we can put this on and we actually need for the dimensionals to be one above and one below. Hi everybody who's joining. Welcome, thanks for joining us. All right, so there's the front, but we need to do something to the inside too. All right, so this is another piece of Whisper White that is four and five and a fourth. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it in before I stamp because I'm afraid I'm gonna smear the ink if I stamp first and then put it in. All right, many blessings in Poppy Parade in the center. And then some of those cute little seeds. So cute. Lisa, you did not like the Buffalo Check until I saw it used. I have been obsessed with Buffalo Check for a while now. Now this is a tiny little sunflower and I'm doing it in Pineapple Punch. My chair that my husband sits in in our living room is actually black and tan buffalo check. I had it recovered last year um, in that because I love it so much. 
I'm glad you like it. Sometimes it does take seeing, nope, I need the brown. Sometimes it does take seeing it used to kind of get your head wrapped around it. All right, now I, I stamped those cute little sunflowers in buffalo, um, in buffalo, <laughs> in pineapple punch, and I'm gonna just take my crumb cake blends and color in the center, and done. So cute. All right, let's slide this back on and look at the finished product. So this is a um, stamp set. Why is, it, why is it not going in there? Come on, there you go. This is a stamp set in the holiday catalog. However, I think this card just proved to you that you won't just use it for the holidays and you won't just use it for fall. This is a very springy card, summery card that you could use that, those cute little sunflowers any time of the year. Linda, you have curtains in black and green buffalo check. That makes me very jealous. I really wanted to have um, the, my chair done in a black and cream or black and white buffalo check, but I have two dogs, three kids and a husband, and I knew I would regret it. <laughs> I love the black and white. It's definitely my favorite. Okay, so I hope you guys like this. This is an easy, fun card. Now I'm going to show you this cute little treat bag. This is our third project, our last one. And this little bag was designed originally by my friend, Angela um, from Canada. Angela McKay, she and I are buddies, and we've been doing some designing together. And so this was one of her original designs, um, the, the bag. So thanks, Angela. If she's, if she's ever watching, um, I have to give her full credit because it's super cute. All right, so here's that paper that I was telling you that is Poppy Parade. Why can I not remember the names of anything? Let's look and see. Um, Santa's Workshop. I should remember that. Santa's Workshop DSP. And some of the patterns are actually flocked and has that fuzzy texture. This one does not. This is just the polka dots with the cute little um, elves on the back. Okay, I need to get my assembly scored. Now, a word of caution when you are scoring DSP, use a very light touch because you will tear it. Um, so I always use, if you're using your Simply Scored, use the, the fatter end because that skinny end tears it every time I use it on my DSP. All right, remember, measurements are here on the PDF. Half an inch, three inches, four and a fourth, and six and three fourths. And I left off the last measurement, but I think it's pretty easy to remember. You turn it and score it at one inch. I'll add that in later. It'll be on the PDF. But if you have already printed it, just add one inch on the short side. All right, so burnish all your lines. My team, um, at our team training this week, we did four Halloween projects and they made this bag using the Halloween paper and it was really cute. Um, this little corner right here, we're gonna cut that off. We don't need it. And then we're going to cut, we're gonna snip these lines all right here, like that. But before we put it together, we're gonna take the one and a fourth circle punch and on the wide panels, the two wide panels, you're going to center your punch right here and go halfway in, just kind of eyeball it. It fits almost perfectly there between those panels and do, do half a circle. And then do the same thing over here. Uh, thanks, Janie. Yeah, we um, may be doing some more stuff. We really liked working together. All right, so put adhesive here on that skinny tab. Use your tear and tape. I mean, if you fold it in half and lay it flat, it should line up perfectly, okay? Now, I always like to make that edge right there, the back side. So I'm going to fold that side in first. So over here, we don't have any rough, um, rough edges. Okay, so, but first let's do the inside tabs. Those go first. And I'm just gonna put a little adhesive there and a little adhesive there. Fold them in. And now we can put adhesive all along here. Like that. All right, so there's the front. Now the handles, you're gonna take that same one and a fourth circle punch, and you're gonna punch two whisper white circles. But you don't need these, so set those aside. You can use them for something else. 
Then you're gonna take your one and a three, one and three fourths and one and three fourths inch circle punch and frame that little one like that. Punch that out. Then frame that little one and punch it out. And there are your handles. That was one and three fourths. Now, I'm just gonna use glue dots to put these on because you guys know my relationship with liquid glue is not a, not a positive one. Liquid glue and I, we have issues. So I'm just gonna use glue dots. But if you and liquid glue get along, this would probably be a good place to put your liquid glue right there. Oh, that, that one's a little bit high. Let's make sure I don't do that over here. I'm gonna just go right there. And it's done, the bag is done. And so I just pinched the sides a little bit. It's like a little tiny shopping bag. Isn't that so cute? So cute. All right, now, where's my stamp? How come my stamp is missing? Uh -huh. Oh, here it is. It's on the wrong tray. I was gonna say, what I did yesterday, usually I do all of this the morning of Facebook Live. I get everything ready and then I film the videos. But I knew I had to go do something this morning. So yesterday I did all of that, filmed the videos, and then I pulled stuff off the trays for stamp class last night. <laughs> and I was afraid that I wasn't going to remember all the things that I needed to put back on here for Facebook Live. So far, I think I've gotten everything. I made a little list, but you know, you know how that goes. It's usually, forget, still forget something. Okay, one more time with our blends. This time I'm using Poppy Parade because that's the color of that DSP. And these candy canes, you need to get really close and use your little tiny um, pointed end and get in there and color them. Now, of course, candy canes are different colors. You could do different colors if you felt so inclined. No shading or anything. I'm just using the dark poppy parade here. Just red, red and white, red and white. While I'm here, I'm gonna do the little berries. I'm also gonna do the little side ribbon on the little crock that's holding them. And the ornament is going to be red and white also. Okay, now let's do Old Olive Dark for these little boughs. And you guys, there's no way to really color these in, so I'm just kind of, I go over the line and then just kind of scribble. <laughs> just kind of go over it because that's really hard to color in. Um, and then the little holly, and it's so tiny. So be careful and go slow. We have a color lifter. Um, so if you do get in a bind and you get color where you really don't want it, you can get that color lifter and help get rid of some of that color. It's not going to remove to pro it's probably not going to return your paper to white, but it does help in some instances. I have used it along the edges when I've kind of gotten out of the line. And it does help. All right, now this is light crumb cake. Jamie says she wishes more of the DSP uses, or would use the, sorry, I've lost my train of thought because I can't find my dark marker. She wishes more of the DSP would use Poppy Parade. I agree, oh, here it is. I agree, um, but Poppy Parade is brand new. So just remember, we've got time. It just came out and it's a brand new core color. So it'll be around for a while. I'm taking the dark crumb cake and going underneath the lip of that crock and then down a little bit and then same on the bottom, just kind of along the bottom and blending it back in with the light. All right, last but not least are the stars. And I'm gonna do those in Dark Daffodil Delight. You guys, is it time to pick my daughter up? What time is it? I need to look. 2.55, oh my gosh, I need to hurry up. Okay, you guys, my daughter, uh oh wait, I forgot the light. My daughter, the elementary school is literally like half a mile from here. And we walk to school every morning, Addie and I, and um, I go, she goes out as a walker and then I go and pick her up to avoid the parent pickup line. Um, and sometimes she 
wants to ride her skateboard or her scooter or whatever home. So I meet her up there, I get her backpack, and then I turn around and come home, and she comes home. And literally it takes like seven minutes, eight minutes maybe. Two-inch circle punch. This week we did that and it had been raining. And so I got her backpack. She wanted to ride her scooter, so she went. And about 10 minutes later, she showed up, in, walks in the door, crying and shaking. And she had fallen right after I had driven away. She had fallen and she had road rash all down the backside. She was wearing shorts from like her little bottom all the way down to the knee on one side. It was one of the scariest things I have ever seen. And I had to really stay calm. Um, she's fine. I did end up taking her to urgent care because it was huge. It was looked like she had been in a motorcycle accident. Um, but so now I'm like, hey, I need to um, make sure I'm up there. And I don't know, she probably won't want to ride the scooter anymore. <laughs> but scary. This is a starburst punch. Two inch circle fits right on top of it. I use it all the time. You guys have probably noticed. Um, years are out today for the hurricane watch. Ooh, you guys. And Kathy, aren't you in the hurricane area too? I have been, I'm a little bit of a weather nerd. Dimensionals on that. Poppy Parade woven ribbon, again. I'm a little bit of a weather nerd. And by little bit, I mean a lot. So when there's like a big storm, I cannot stop watching. I've got the weather channel on in the car. I've got the weather channel on in the house. My husband's super annoyed. He doesn't want to watch the weather channel. So you guys over there on the East Coast, I have been thinking about you and worrying about you. So I'm hoping you guys are okay. Not too bad yet, Kathy. Okay, good. Because I really, I have been thinking about you today. Because um, it took that turn down to the Southwest. And I know that, woof. That was kind of heading towards your area. Okay, I'm just gonna attach that right there with a mini glue dot and that's it. Look, I have three. Yay, I love when I have three. Three teacher treats done. Fill them with Hershey Kisses or whatever for Christmas. All right, you guys, let's review before I end the video. We did one cute Christmas treat bag. We did a sunflower gatefold card and a really fun pumpkin fall hand cream holder. I hope you guys like these. If you have questions, let me know. Um, I'm gonna just kind of scroll down the look to see if I missed anything. Judy, you are on my weather nerd team, good. I'm not alone, I love weather a lot. And I come from a long line of weather nerds. <laughs> My mom and my grandmother are both the same way. Addie is fine, by the way. Thank you all. She did miss school the next day. The doctor recommended that she um, stay home for a day. Um, and she was totally fine. She could have totally gone to school. She does have trouble sitting because now it's just a giant like scab down, all down her backside. Um, but she's okay. Um, what do I store my blends in? Cindy, that's a great question. I store them in a blends storage unit from Stampin' Storage. It's a company called Stampin' Storage. You can find them online. Um, I like it, but it's because they all have a little hole. When I pull a bunch of them out like this, then it kind of is tedious to put them all back in. Um, but I, but it holds them well. I used to have this cute little wooden crate that I just, it was just a cute wooden crate that they all just kind of piled in. Um, so that's how I do that. Um, yeah, no, nope, Ginger, you're not the only one who forgets supplies. I am notorious for forgetting something. Thanks, Shelby, I'm glad you like the bag. All right, love you. Thank you guys, you guys are so sweet. Remember next week, on Wednesday, Wednesday, I'm leaving town on Thursday, so I've got it scheduled for Wednesday. Come back on Wednesday, same time, two o'clock, and I've got three really fun Halloween treats. All right, you guys have a great day. Everybody over there on the East Coast, be safe. I'm thinking and praying for all of you guys. Turn around, don't drown, that's the words they say here, and I know it's gonna apply to you guys too. All right, guys, have a great weekend and let me know if you have questions. Go back over to the blog and enter to win the prizes. Bye.